Hello everyone, I'm Martin Leung, a video game pianist, and I've started a new Let's Play series. And the first game we're going to take a look at is called Teoria, which means music theory. This game is a music theory game that provides ear training for musicians and anybody who's interested in improving their musician skills. Today's section we're going to be looking at melodic uh, two voice dictation and what's going to happen is that the computer is going to generate some melodies that have been inputted and there are uh, 893 total exercises possible and the computer will generate one of these exercises and will play them and from hearing the notes I will have to write out those notes on a musical staff. And here I've selected the possible, all the possible uh, configurations that can be presented here, uh, including major and minor scales, quarter note, eighth note, and sixteenth note rhythmic values, and different levels of melodic complexity. And I've chosen the tempo, or the speed at which the notes will be played at, to be at the highest setting, allegro, which means joyful. So let's go. And also, I'll have um, all right. So that was the first sample. I was just going to say that I'm also going to have a notepad on the side of the screen, so for you to see my thoughts and my process through how I go about these two voice dictations. So let me get that up there. Okay. So I'm going to be writing here and I'll be writing notes on the staff here while selecting Uh, different uh, rhythmic values here and the uh, note names I'll type into the staff here and then after I've completed writing my answer here I'll click check answer and the computer will see how many notes I've gotten right and which notes I didn't get right and will show which notes uh, if I if I got a note wrong I'll put an X by the note that I incorrectly wrote in so let's get started so I'll play this again So I just tried to write out the left hand, but the left hand has this rhythm that, that was kind of surprising, that changed, and the right hand is also has an active line. So this is a little complex. Let's hear it again. Okay, I think I've written out all the notes there. I'd let now see what was the rhythm da, 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 de, da. so that means a 16th note and I don't know why that natural sign appeared there it's not necessary okay B A G and F sharp A I'm just trying to transfer this into there and I trust that I've memorized the rhythm without having to write that down Now I think the rhythm repeats. I'm not sure about this. So let's see it again. Okay, so these are 16 notes there. Da, 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 da. These are all even. Now, I forgot what this was.
Let's do it again. Sorry, the notes are left hand. So that looks like this. Okay, so I can't write up these notes here and put them here because um, I need to write the, the notes in this order this way. So it's not like um, the previous notation software that I used, which I could enter notes in, in any order I please. I have to go in this order. So let's hear it again. Okay, so the right hand, one can kind of figure the right hand out by if one has studied counterpoint because the right hand will follow the left hand in certain parts, uh, will coincide with the left hand in, in a tenth here, and then another tenth here, and then there will be a voice exchange here, and then a F sharp. She's a half note. So I think this is the right idea. So the voice exchange is here. So as you see, there's a B in this voice here, and it gets exchanged to the B in the bass clef. And then this G here gets exchanged to this G here in the treble clef. This is voice exchange. Alright, so let's play it again. Just double check. Okay, so now I'm going to submit my answer. Click check answer. Correct. Alright, so let's go on to the next one. Alright, so that sounded like three blind mites. So again, if you look at this, there's another voice exchange here. Uh, the A goes down to the A, and this F goes up to F, and these Gs, they're both the same note. All right, so let's check this answer. Correct. Next one. So now the, I'm going to try transcribing the most difficult voice, which would be most likely the moving voice, the one that has the most notes and the shortest in the, in the same amount of time. So that's a bass clef because there are quarter notes in the bass clef, and then, then the, the slower notes in the treble clef. So as I wrote it here, uh, I wrote it. I noticed that this is uh, a quarter note, so I started focusing on this one immediately. So F, C, E, B. If you notice here, I don't have the direction uh, inputted here. I just rely on my memory for that. And then A. And then here I wrote increased amount of space between the notes to remind myself that these will be half notes. Or at least a longer value. The last note could be a whole note, depending on what part of the measure it lands on. Oops. Hmm. 
do listen again because I'm not sure if this F here is a half note already because if it would be then this wouldn't make sense because there are already three beats here in a 4-4 four, four measure so the fourth beat would have to be a quarter note and I don't recall any rhythm that went quarter, half quarter So the half note started on the A there. And then that's the whole note. As I said before, this last note, F, is a whole note because it lands on the first beat of the measure and there are no notes after that. Well, it could be a half note with a half rest. So sometimes the program does that. Um, I have to check, so I can't assume that just because there's one note in that measure, it's going to be a whole note. So I'll put a question mark there to check that. Now let's look at the right hand. Okay. E, E, F. A, F, another voice exchange here. And D, B e flat, G, E, F. And I forgot to check with this uh, whole note or half note. But uh, let's hear it again. So that is a whole note there. And also just notice there's another voice exchange here. So a lot of these examples come from Bach. So these, um, this music sample is really well written. And it may seem very simple just to have two voices in this music here, but it's actually quite challenging to write good sounding music with just two melodies. It's, it's deceptively simple. So uh, if you're up to your challenge, you can try to write some music yourself, and it, it's not going to be as easy as it seems, because whatever notes you write for the right hand, you're going to be limited in your choices for the left hand, and vice versa, and those two voices have to, have to sound really good together, and this is what we call a good counterpoint. So there's um, different types of counterpoint species. All right, so I think that's this is my final answer. So let's check it and see how it is. Correct. Next exercise. All right. So we have a lot of dotted rhythms here, and it's in G minor. So Let's look at the moving, the fastest voice, which is in the right hand. What's hmm, happening? Why can't input notes there? Hmm. I never seen this happen before. Why can't input notes in the right hand there? Let's try it again. Da, da, da. Yeah, it stops here. Play it again. Hmm. 
Hmm, that's really strange. Oh, there. How did that happen? I want to write a G there. Coordinate, note, but it won't let me. Oh, because, oh, I see why. Because it wouldn't be possible because of the, this, the rhythm here. This is not, oh, I thought this was a dotted chord note. It's a dotted eighth note. So that changed the story. So this should be a 16th note. So I just inputted the notes at a higher level than they should be. So I'm going to diminute my notes there and make these like that. One, two, three, four, and then E flat, something like that. I know the left hand went up to B flat. Let's see it again. Okay. Now this is a dotted coin. sharp dotted half note and then in anticipation G to the downbeat of the next measure so this is what we call anticipation it's a non chord tone which I'll show you later this will be a um, some type of dominant function here and this G is not part of the chord in the D major or D dominant 7 chord as there's no uh, the, the D Five chord is, would be D, F sharp, and A. But the note G is not part of these three notes. So we call this, this is a non chord tone, and it's called an anticipation tone because it anticipates the note of the downbeat. It makes the listener want to anticipate what's coming next because this note gives a certain flow to the music that is going to arrive to the downbeat and give a greater sense of satisfaction to the listener. So let's figure out the baseline now. It may be possible to figure out some part of the baseline just by figuring out what the right hand is doing. Let's see. I wrote it down here. G, E flat, C, D, and that might be a half note. And then let's say the G goes down here. So let's check this first. Okay, so this D should be like that. So this D goes down an octave and then cadences on the G. Notice how the bass circles this G here. It makes it an, another, um, this makes it more satisfactory, uh, gives more satisfaction. This adds another color to the, the harmony, slow D. And so um, by default this chord is a five chord, there's no seventh here. So still dominant function it goes to tonic here now I'm just gonna check one more time since I've been talking and I I want to be uh, you know it's always good to triple check the work sometimes two three four all right so 
This is my final answer. Correct. Let's go on to the next one. All right, so um, this is pretty straightforward. E, E, F sharp, G, C, D, G. Answer correct. All right, so let's go into the next exercise. All right, wow, that was a lot of notes. So let's see what's going on. It's like it's on a three four meter, so it's like a dance. A, F. A, C, G, B e flat, A, and I think that's a half note, A, G, A, G, F, E, F, G, F, something like that, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it makes sense, six bar measure, it's an even number, so this is looking pretty uh, convincing. Now let's see what the left hand will be. I'm going to make a prediction, maybe this is going to be... C, F, I don't know, something like this. It could go down to E, who knows. Let's play it again. All right, so adding these dotted half notes takes an extra click on the mouse button. So I was focused on the left hand and got distracted and didn't pay attention to the right hand here. Let's play it again. All right, so that, there it is. So let's check the answer. Correct. Next one. So that was pretty short. A, B, C. I wonder where I wrote D there. Play it again. Okay, let's check it. Correct. All right, and that's my final answer. Correct. Alright, so if you notice here, I wrote G, C, E, C, E, D, B, E, C. So when I write the two letters together, that's a signal to myself, a reminder myself that this is the first letters to the right hand, the second letters to the left hand, the first note is the right hand, the second letters the left hand, and so forth, because I have time to do that because of the half notes. But if they were like uh, quarter notes or uh, eighth notes or even faster, I wouldn't have time to write this out like that. But since it's like that, I have time to do it. And that's my shorthand way. And then I input it here. Because if I input everything here at once when I'm when I'm hearing it, it may it might it'll take more time to do that than and I might miss some notes. So I'm trying to do everything in as few hearings as possible, as well as me talking, explaining my thoughts out. So if I were to do this without talking, then I would even do this at a much faster pace. But it's uh an extra
challenge to talk and and transcribe. All right, so the, I heard the bass move by step upwards, and the right hand was mainly in all eighth notes. So maybe for the last note. So let's see how this goes. C, B, A, G sharp. Since we're in the key of A minor, there's a G sharp leading tone instead of a G natural. And then B, A, G sharp. A, C, B, A, G, B, A, G sharp, La, Mi, Re, Do, C, Re, C, and then Sol, La, which I assume is for now as a whole note, but we've got to double check that again because it could be a myriad of options like half note, um, uh, half rest or a dotted half note and a quarter rest. It could be like a um, quarter note tied to a 32nd note. Who knows? But they don't have ties here. But my point is that just because it's the last note of, of a piece doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be a whole note. One has to be on, uh, so to speak, their own tiptoes throughout the whole entire piece until it's finished, until the double bar line. But this... This is an excerpt, so it doesn't really end here, but this three measures of sound, that's what transcription is, just transcribing sound, being transcribing whatever's thrown at me. So let's see the left hand. I think the left hand is going up by step here. C, and then somehow it has to go to the, get to E uh, to serve as a dominant function, but I don't know if it's going to jump from C to E like that. So there could be some something here, something ingenious by the composer. Let's see what's going on. Okay, well, there was a leap there, which makes sense. But sometimes it could be um, uh, maybe this is the what works out best and it sounds very good anyway it's, it's the leap here is not very very obtrusive okay so let me check the right hand notes again and then I'll check with the computer two three four all right so this was a whole note here these are whole those are whole notes Check answer correct. Next one. All right, so I wrote the D in parentheses to remind myself that the G goes downwards not upwards, because sometimes that G can go upwards, but just to remind myself there. All right, so let's input the left hand notes. These are all quarter notes. E, D, C, D, E, C, D, C, D, D, and then G. Now let's look at what the right hand did. So here, if you notice here, this is another dominant function here, but there is no anticipation because this note is an F sharp. So this note is confirming this long note here. And you might wonder, why is this a uh, dotted half note? Why isn't this just a whole note? Uh, is this a whole note? Well, the F sharp, sometimes on the fourth beat, it provides a direction to the downbeat. It gives direction to listener to go listen to this note here. Whereas if this were just a whole note here, 
And that will hold note here. There would be less of a uh, push to the cadence. And also, as the music nears the cadence, sometimes the rhythmic values will increase. Well, here they average out to two beats per note, as these are two beats a note. But here, this mainly is to provide uh, direction to the downbeat here. Okay, so let's submit this answer. And I'm pretty sure I heard this as both whole notes. Correct. Two quarter notes. Alright, so a lot of quarter notes. This is called first species counterpoint for all your theory buffs out there. So in other words, there is note-to-note -note counterpoint where whatever note is quarter note is in the right hand, the left hand will also have a quarter note and will also sound really pleasant when they play together side note by note like that. So let's see what's here, what's going on. We're in the key of E minor, and there's D sharps here because the D sharp is part of the, the leading tone for the E minor scale, E harmonic minor scale. So I transcribed um, the right hand. So let's see, E, F sharp, G, E, F sharp. Oops. Then D sharp, and then E. Put a question mark on this E here because it could be a quarter note and a quarter bass. So I have to check that again. Now I know I heard uh, some sort of voice exchange here. I'm not sure what's going on. Let's do it again. Deceptive cadence here, which I'll explain in a minute. G, A, G, F sharp, E, uh, F sharp, E, B e sharp, B, E. Again, to check if that's a half note or quarter note. So what's going on here? Oh, here's a voice exchange here. And what I mean by here is deceptive cadence. The music uh, is leading the listener to, it could be a uh, E minor harmony here, just as this was an E minor harmony here, but it goes to a deceptive cadence with C in the bass. So the bass moves up by a half step to C, and now the music continues because there has to be a resolution all the way to here. So notice these beautiful tenths here. First species counterpoint. So these voices go in parallel motion here. And notice this beautiful voice crossing here, voice exchange. And notice the symmetry of this. We start off with E here. And we end on E here, the same pitches, E and E and E and E. Notice the voice change comes in the second bar. The voice change here comes in the penultimate bar. And then we have four bars here, where there's a rise of the phrase to the C, right in the peak of the phrase, and then it goes back down. It kind of lingers on here magically, the CBAC, as if somebody is walking on the water or, or floating in the air. It's the music is lingering here and then cadences gracefully through this nice D sharp. So it can go by step to E. 
And so there's look of a uh, beautiful symmetry in the music here. Even the bass line goes up and then it goes down here. So let's check it one more time. So I just want to be sure of all my work because, uh, yeah, it would be great to hear it one more time anyways, played by the computer. And this was a half note here. And I didn't miss any accidental, so these are all uh, D sharps. Okay, let's check it. Correct. All right, let's go into the next one. All right, I didn't even have to write that down. I memorized that. A, G, B, A, then F, E. G, F. Yeah, so these are all uh, first pieces counterpoint and by tenths. So F, E, G, F, F, B flat. Okay. I sometimes when I'm talking, it's it's a little harder to 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 write all these notes and memorize it, and when I'm talking, but if I was just just doing this here without talking, I wouldn't have to write this down. My point is that the this exercise is very uh, short, and I could just memorize it by just by logic. So notice here that there's um, again it's tonic, and then this is um, subdominant function, which could be. Uh, some sort of two chord or uh, or uh, yeah some that's a two six and this could be a, some sort of seven uh, diminished seven or a uh, some sort of dominant uh, chord in first inversion. Okay, so let's check the answer. Well, let's see it one more time. And also, sometimes composers like to use symbolism with this crossing here. So if you can connect these two notes in here and this note here, like that, I can, there are other examples that are more clear, but sometimes there are these voice crossings here and this represents the cross, because a lot of uh, Christianity elements in music for Bach. So let's. Uh, so that's that's just uh, an interpretation of this example. Correct. Okay, so there's a lot of notes in this exercise, and just as it seemed to cadence around here, it continued for a few more bars, or one more bar. So let's see what's going on. There's some imitation from this, the right hand, so let me write down what I've got. Mi, re, do, si, la, so, la, fa. And this was like, so something like this, and then this was imitated here. So, let's hear it again. Let's play it again. Oh, 
Okay, so this that. All right, it was something like this, but I'm just going off my short-term memory here, what I heard, short-term auditory memory. All right, so I wrote the order of notes in a different order there. So, let's just see this imitation here. This part here is imitated here. So, there we have this imitation here. And then the right hand continues the eighth note rhythm here. And then, as you see, there's a broadening of the rhythm out. We have four notes here and eighth notes, then four notes and quarter notes, and then one note and a whole note. So again, this is really beautifully crafted as uh, augmentation of the rhythm. All right, let's hear it one more time. Okay, let's check the answer. Correct. Next one. That's unlike my country, tis of thee. So, let's see. Check again. Okay, let's check the answer. Correct. Next one. Okay, check the answer, correct. Correct. I wrote a dash here to um, express how this E went on to the second beat there. So I accomplished figuring this rhythmic value out in the same hearing as hearing these notes here. Let's hear the bass line. Let's check the answer. Correct. Correct.
correct. That's what we call third species counterpoint, where there are four notes in the moving voice. We'll all write that C in a second and one note in the bass line there. Alright, so that technically wasn't third species counterpoint because there are two notes in the note. But if you look here, this these notes are in pairs. They're reinforcing the second note is reinforcing the harmony. And so these all these notes here, they're this matches with the C, this is a tenth, and so this is technically a second species counterpoint. And let's check the answer. Correct. Next one. Let's see the baseline. All right, let's check the answer. Correct. Correct. I'm going to guess this is a C because this would be a dominant function. And then it's an F here. So in the penultimate measure, usually there's going to be some dominant function. And then the last measure is going to cadence back to the tonic. And we see here we have this pattern of these two notes that are rising up to the top. The C, which is the peak of the phrase, and it goes cadences back down to tonic in the first scale degree. So let's hear it again just to check. All right. Correct. Next exercise. Ooh, three flats. Hear that F sharp and the middle of the phrase somewhere that came out of nowhere. That's what's so beautiful about music. So let's make sense of this all. Start out with an E, ma e flat major arpeggio, and then seem to be in the land of uh, E flat major. But then there's a secondary dominance that went to G minor and then cadence again. So let's hear that again. Okay, so that happened earlier than I expected.
F sharp G A C That's my guess for the bass line. That leap here from B flat to C, that was that doesn't happen all the time. I think there's a leap here. So let's hear it again. And I'll try to make sense of what's happening. Okay, so let's do some harmonic analysis. We have E flat here, then we have a secondary dominance. A five seven of three. One E flat major. And then we go to three, G minor three, then a subdominant, A flat four, and then five, seven, and then one. So it's just this measure here, we have a secondary dominant that really um, creates a surprise because look at the phrasing, the amount of measures of one, two, three, four, five, six. And as you know, phrases, measures are usually grouped in, in bars of four or two. So this actually, this measure here is technically this music is not dependent on this measure here. In other words, if one spliced that measure out, if this measure didn't exist, then the music could still sustain fluidity and nobody would really notice, if one didn't know the music, one would notice that this harmony would be taken out. Because it could go from one to three to four to five to seven and then one and it would make perfect sense. But this measure here adds a surprising element to the music because it adds a new color. It's unexpected because F sharp is not in the key of, of E flat major. This F sharp comes from the land of D major. So these notes are from the scale. Or it's from, this is from uh, actually the G major scale here. This is the dominant function of G. So this is really surprising here. Let's play it one more time. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of it's a little humorous how this is inserted here. Is the bass line could could go from E flat to G to A flat B flat E, but this is this is really really ingenious here. Okay, so let's check the answer. Oh, I left out the A natural. <laughs> of course, because yeah, because this is, again, I just said this is a, a key of uh, G major. So yes, it would be an A natural here because the key signature is A flat here, so there has to be A natural here to cancel out the flats. Okay, so yeah, that's <laughs> funny. Okay, so this is 
really a surprising measure in, in many levels. Okay, so let's go on to the next one, the next exercise. All right, so here, be natural there. So let's see what's going on here. Just looking at my score, it still says 100 out of 100. So usually if you make mistakes, this number will go down here. It might go down to like 99, but somehow it's still at 100 because I must have answered all the previous notes correctly that the computer didn't uh, necessitate to take off the 100 from the score. So it's still 100 even after uh, missing that A natural uh, and that measure too. Okay. So let's hear this again. Okay. Do I need to see the natural sign? The, the, you don't need the natural sign from the C there. Now we do need an accidental for the next note, D, D flat, B. Dot a chord note and then a B natural here. Don't forget the natural signs now. And this should be a half note. So Let's look at the left hand. So this is my guess for the left hand. Let's try it again. All right, so there's a passing tone here at G, so I need to erase all this to enter that. I think everything else was right. Let's play it again. Okay, that was what um, I followed what I heard. So let's see if I miss any accidental signs. Nope, everything is good. We don't need a D natural sign here, even though it would be a called a complementary accidental or reminder accidental because of a D flat here. Sometimes in music there'll be a, a, a natural sign in parentheses here to remind the pianist that this is a D natural and not a D flat. But I don't think that's necessary to input it in this uh, exercise. Correct. All right. Check it again. All right. Correct. All right. So there was something I missed there. And let's see if we get the left hand. Okay, that's my guess for the left hand, and now 
Let's figure out the right hand. That should be a six of yeah. Let's put it in. Okay, so we have parallel structure, similar structure in everything. Like that, shoot again. All right, so I made two errors. Well, I caught two errors. Pause the video to see if you can figure it out, and I'll tell you the answer in a few seconds. So, see if you can figure out what I did wrong. And I'm just about to make the change, but pause the video and or rewind it to the last playing and see if you can figure out what's wrong what what are the errors in here all right so the errors are i changed the order of these two notes here so what i need to do is i need to flip the order of the notes around i thought this would be D F because the bass note was B flat and I thought the D would coincide very nicely. It would be a tenth and it'd be constant with each other. But the composer decided to have F D, that would make the music sound more beautiful. And in a sense it makes it makes actually more sense in the bigger picture. Because if you look at the previous note here, E, this note is called a leading note and these notes have to resolve to the F upwards. So it does not make sense for the E to go down to the B to the D, excuse me, because this E has to resolve to F according to the rules of counterpoint and, and just natural voice leading. So this that's why the F should be there. And so let's go and make that change. So now, as you see, this leading tone E resolves to the F there. And you might wonder, oh, what about this E? Because this E doesn't resolve to F, it actually goes to the A here. Well, in this case, this E is less of a melodic function. It's a harmonic function because this, again, some penultimate harmony and this is a 5-7 harmony. So this E is a chord tone and this would resolve in most likely an inner voice here. So if there are more voices, this E would go to its F here, something like that, and resolve that way. But since this is a two voice exercise, uh, only the top voice and the bottom voice are presented. In many cases, um, in Bach, Bach's music, there are sometimes, there are inner voices. So there will be notes that are going along here, and there are notes that will go along here. And these make the harmonies sound more rich and make the music uh, give more warmth to the music as well. But for now, they're just two voices. And as I said before, it's difficult to write uh, two voice uh, pieces. So even though the, there are just a few notes, it's difficult. And if you want to check out pieces with just two voices, I recommend uh, you could check out uh, the Bach uh, Inventions. 
So all these pieces in the inventions are written with just two voices. And there are some, there's one piece, this, an invention in F major. I think it's number eight, but I'm not sure. Uh, it's been a while since I've, I've, I've played that piece. This uh, Bach invention, F major, has appeared in a video game, at least one video game. So it's uh, these Bach pieces are, are not just, um, they're, they're, they have video game relevance and this relevance to uh, the video, this video game themed uh, YouTube channel. So this, uh, let's check this example one more time. Alright, so now let's check with the computer. Oh, so B natural. Of course, because it's from the E major harmony. This is B, B natural. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Again, forget the natural sign when so many things going on. So I remember the sharp sign, but the, the natural sign because it's from this. Not, this is not from the key of F major. Okay, and my score went down to ninety nine. So I guess I have to keep going, and hopefully my score will go back to one hundred if I complete more examples. So I'm gonna keep going, and I won't talk as much. So hopefully. I'll continue and get the score up to 100. And there we go. My score went back up to 100 after completing that exercise. Okay, so phew. Okay, so even though I made those two errors of leading me out the natural sign, somehow I got a perfect score overall. So I'm not claiming to be perfect at transcribing music, and I make mistakes from time to time, as you've seen, in leaving those two accidental natural signs out when those foreign strange keys. Uh, were inserted into the music, but they added more beauty and more color to the music and made the music more interesting and engaging, even more than it was before written before. 
and sometimes I get I miss those naturals because they're from a different scale so and I have to natural those accidentals out because from the key signature they have predetermined notes in the scale a configuration and when those uh, those beautiful notes from another another world come into the music then I have to make sure to write the natural sign there so that those notes will be natural and not be influenced by the key signature. So there you have it, uh, my first playthrough of Teoria, which means theory in Portuguese. So there are many more exercises in this uh, game, and uh, I'll go through uh, different exercises in the future. So there's like uh, harmonic uh, progressions, uh, rhythmic dictations, um, tapping rhythms with the mouse or the keyboard, and so forth. So it's a great way to improve one's ear and just for ear training in general. And I recommend this for any musician to pr improve his or her musical skills. This is a wonderful tool. And all you need to do is just work on this maybe 15 to 20 minutes a day. That's, that's enough to make an, uh, an improvement um, in one's skills. All you need is just 15 to 20 minutes a day, but it has to be done consistently. So you have to do this uh, in a consistent way day after day, and you'll improve your, your ear training and your, your listening skills. So um, here's the, the overview of what I've completed, so uh, the duration is 70 minutes, 32 exercise, 410 correct notes, two errors, but a perfect score of 100 out of 100. So um, thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.